Hey there, everybody. This is Carrie Hamblin, the CEO and president of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce, bringing to you again another one of our Zoom chats. These are benefits for our members of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce. And we've got a whole crew here because it takes a whole crew to put on what we're talking about. We have Kevin Self and Laura Self and Charlene from Michelle's Dance Academy. And we have Francisco Renteria, who is the conductor of the Chamber Ballet Orchestra. And they are working very hard to bring the 2023 version of the Nutcracker. It is so great to see you all. Hi, nice to see you. Thank you I think, Absolutely, I think, isn't that the room that we did line dancing in when we had a green yeah. drink? Yeah. And plan for it again this summer, don't forget. We, we are gonna do it again this summer, I can't wait. And so you all have been working very hard at the time of recording this. And the Nutcracker, gosh, you know, I have fond memories of going as a kid in El Paso to the Nutcracker. It really is a holiday tradition, regardless of your, your beliefs. And, and I'm wondering, in your experience, how have you seen it change over the years? Oh, you mean our personal production here in Las Cruces? Your personal production, or have you seen just, is it always going to, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking back to when I saw it as a kid in El Paso, and, you know, there are certain elements that are always like just diehard Nutcracker performances. Um, have you seen any of those change or, or, or how have you, you can answer that question too, well, Kevin, on how you all have changed. I think what we've seen and what we experienced across America is an adjustment, but we maintain the skeletal part. And I think you, you, that way you satisfy the traditionalists and then you also satisfy the, the progressives. So we're just easy. We're, we're non-political. See, we make their life much easier. And, and so I think that that's the way you have to do it. Well, what's an example of an adjustment? Well, we've had to go, we've, we've actually had to adjust our uh, Chinese tea because okay. it was very, very racist. And oh, that's, absolutely. That's been taken care of across the United States. And actually this year we are doing tea. We have a giant 12 foot tea pot and it's matching sauce. What is it? Uh, sugar, sugar and creamer. <laughs> and then the kids have these huge uh, cups that cups they dance with. So it, it's it's totally non-political, but it's precious. It really is precious. So things like that we've changed, but we usually end up changing because of the nature of our, our educational production is fit the choreography to the student's ability, make it challenging, but still fit it to, and we have each year another set of students often. So it's going to change without fail. And so you have like all ages participating in this. In this. From what, three to? Well, no, not eight. We have a baby. We do have one two-year-old oh, who right. is a mouse this year. That's right. <laughs> and you don't have to steal the show, right? <laughs> yeah. All yeah. those years of dance classes. Yeah. <laughs> and she just uh, runs, runs out and the crowd goes wild. Yeah, we, we try to make it available to everybody that way. I mean, that's, that's what the nature of, of our production is. It's not uh, to put the best dancer up there. I'll give someone a role if I think they're going to work hard and it's going to benefit them over someone who's already achieved that particular position. So, well, and it's also seeing somebody's potential and not wanting to squash that, you know, and wanting to really kind of help nurture that instead of saying, well, you're not what we need right now. You know, you don't want to do that. Exactly. We're not, we're not that kind of professional production where everything stems on having the best dancer in the best position. And no, it's an opportunity. All our positions are opportunities. So that makes, that's the criteria. Well, well, Francisco, how have you seen it change coming from, uh, you know, a, a chamber ballet orchestra? I mean, there's certainly the performance level that has to also kind of modify and change, too. Correct. Um, the way I've seen it change in like in a musical setting, of course, has been by cuts, you know, with budget uh, budgets, you know, becoming smaller and, you know, an orchestra is expensive where I mean, we're talking a, a a good sum of money. I've I've realized that you know sometimes like shrinking the orchestra steals color, you know, from from that magic. And so in that regard, it's changed. Um, but I think what I've noticed the most is like Mr. Self said, is um, most of the change is you know more visual than music. And you know if you're not extremely obsessed with the Nutcracker, then you know some of these people are writing really great reductions but of course you know nothing beats the sound of a full symphony orchestra with all of the color instruments right well you know and, and kevin looked around like mr self like who's that um <laughs> knowing him My now, dad's here. yeah 
Well, you know, there's a ton of work that goes into choreographing dance to music, especially in a production like this, that people, you know, many people know what to expect. And then there are those who are going for the first time. So can you kind of take us through the creative process of working together? Well, what we have to do is constantly adapt to what we have to work with. So, like I said, we keep the skeleton, we keep the narrative the same because we want the tradition to stay alive. But we walk it through the from the audition on, we walk it through, and I sit there and I start choreographing from the very beginning, not, not looking at the music, not looking at the stage, looking at the student and seeing what the student can do. And then you just let it grow from there. And you push them and you push them, and then you have a nice flower at the end. So it, it that's really the process. And we started with uh, Francisco. We met him last December. He sent us a video of his orchestra playing part of Nutcracker. And we were actually in strike for our last Nutcracker. And I said, Kevin, you've got to hear these people. They're amazing. And so we started working with him in January on how we were going to get an orchestra going, how are we can, and we're just been so excited about that process. And then we start in the summer looking for our professionals from Dance Theater of Harlem. You have to book them in the summer because they get bookings all around the country. Um, so we've been very fortunate to secure these incredible professionals from Dance Theater of Harlem. But you know what they jumped at? When as soon as they heard we had a live orchestra, we had a lot of dancers lined up, professional top-notch dancers, because they don't get that opportunity anymore. And with Frankie's generosity, we're going to make it happen. Well, and there's something really magical about having that, and you know that 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 combination and and that magic. And Laura, I want to mention, you said uh, you know you were in strike. I want to make sure, just because we're still you know very familiar with this, <laughs> I got to, that when you mean strike, you mean that you're striking the sets, that you're you're breaking yeah, everything down. Striking our last set. And actually, at that Nutcracker, we also talked with one of our former students who runs a studio in Hobbs, New Mexico, and she said, "My students never get to do a Nutcracker. Is that a?" chance we could do that and we said let's talk about it. she's bringing 20 dancers from Hobbs New Mexico to dance Waltz of the Flowers and they're thrilled not only they get to be in a nutcracker but with a live orchestra and it adds so much flavor to have another whole group of dancers in there so this collaborative process has been huge this year we've never had so many factions going on at the same time well how do you how do you do that I mean the, the logistics of so you've got folks in Hobbs you know Francisco, are you you bringing in any folks here that are going to be here like the last week? Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I can't even imagine the logistics. It's definitely quite fun. And I am so thankful to Kevin and Laura for this opportunity. But at least in my on my side of the spectrum, trying to find all of the musicians and December is just crazy for musicians. Absolutely. I mean, we're talking church gigs, symphony here there can you play for my dog can you play for my cat you know <laughs> and so <laughs> having truly what i consider an international orchestra is just such a treat because you know music is so diverse and being able to collaborate with these people and trying to gather them together is is really neat it is a lot of work but um once you get them to say yes and you get them to sign a contract they show up and and it's it's quite nice. Then you get to relax a little bit. And then the next most stressful thing, of course, would be a downbeat. But, you know, it's just a downbeat. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I'm thinking, you know, with the with the dancers from Hobbs and you've got, you know, these folks coming in to perform. Like, is it like the last week is like your crunch week where everybody's all in the same room and you're doing doing all the magic then? Actually, we've compartmentalized it so that it should just fall into place. Let us pray. It always has. It always has. I mean, this is not the first year we've had all these pieces. Actually, the only new part is the orchestra. We've had dancers come in from all over and we have to get Airbnb for them. And it's just uh, typical logistics. I don't think this, it's that much a bigger problem. You just add another compartment. And mm -hmm. since she was a former dancer, she probably knew the choreography better than we knew it by yeah. this point. Yeah. And so she was able to get a video and watch it and, and set it all up. So it's just a matter of kind of staging it all that week not that it won't be stressful but it's so exciting to have so many different people coming in working with us even a live chorus diane schutz uh, is gathering a live chorus of the top singers in all the high schools to sing the snow chorus so it's just so another part it's amazing it's what amazing. a lovely collaboration diane has been a long time legend in las cruces when really it comes is. to the choral work really and, is. and so as we finish up today i'm wondering 
as you continue to rehearse and prepare for the performances on the 15th and 16th, you know, what are you most, I mean, this is, might be like asking you to pick your favorite kid, but what are you most excited about uh, with this performance? Francisco, I'm going to have you, you go first. So I know this might sound redundant, but truly for me, uh, the magic starts with a collaboration and I really appreciate the educational opportunities and approach that Laura and Kevin take to their students. So the, colla the collaboration with the Las Cruces Chamber Ballet, the dancers, and of course the guests. I've seen some clips and they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I can't just tell you that, you know, going to conducting school, um, you kind of conduct with recordings because an orchestra, like I said, it's just not very accessible. As an instrumentalist, you buy your instrument, it's you and your instrument. But as a conductor, you need people, you need friends, you need community. And so I can't thank them enough for providing that for us. And so I'm the most excited for the authenticity that live music provides for the audience, for even the orchestra. You know, sitting down and playing, knowing that you're being heard is one thing. But knowing that we got to sound just as great for dancers and the dancers dance just as good because there's music that whole energy that just kind of fills the room and and I don't know I it, it's truly magic and I I love that and of course I am very 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 excited for the impact that this will have on students because I will tell you something um I think if if I would have had the opportunity to go see Nutcracker when I was younger I mean I would have fallen in love with symphony orchestra at an earlier age and you will never know who your next, you know, principal dancer for these big companies are. And myself and, and Mr. Self have done such a wonderful job to just really nurture that. The same is true for the orchestra. You know, I don't know who who I get to work with that might someday take over and just continue that legacy. And that's what I'm most excited about. Well, Francisco, you and I could probably have a whole, I mean, all of us, I think, could have a whole nother conversation about accessibility of uh, the arts uh, to folks, as you all have been longtime advocates. And and so, um, you know, Charlene, what about you? What are you excited about for this? I think um, I'm looking forward to the orchestra, the music and the dancers coming together. And um, I just don't think they know yet how powerful it's going to be for them, you know, because we keep talking about it, but I'm excited when we get on stage and put it all together. I think I think it's going to be amazing and amazing mm -hmm. for the students. Yeah. What about you, Lauren, Kevin? I'm so excited about the school demo we're doing right before it on the Tuesday morning, the weeks of the, the week of the performances. We're having three um, more needy schools uh, that don't get a lot of arts education. Right. Are, are being bussed in along with some private schools and some homeschooled kids. And we're filling the theater with kids to teach them about live music, to teach them about Nutcracker, Yay. to show them things that they may never ever get to see. And I know that's how I fell in love with live music. It was a Peter and the Wolf production that I got to see. Aww. And so I, I think that's what I'm looking forward to, seeing these kids saying, oh my gosh, I had no idea that this was all available. Yeah. I am looking forward to fulfilling Michelle's greatest dream. When she started the Chamber Ballet 40 years ago, this was the first thing she said, I want an orchestra. It took 40 years. Because of that, I'm reprising my role as Drosselmeyer. I thought I was going to retire, but I will not miss working with Frankie on stage. So I, that's my biggest, biggest thrill. Well, make sure you take care of that knee and the, the 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 leg, Kevin. I know you're like the worst patient ever when it comes down to. Oh, I'm busted. It's not busted. Well, it's because you and I share that same quality, and it's That's not. Right. Just I remember that. Yeah. Redeeming. Well, I'm very excited about that. If you are interested, you'll have the information to purchase tickets for the Nutcracker Ballet, which will be performed in Las Cruces Friday, December 15th at 7 o'clock and Saturday, December 16th at 2. And then again, another performance at 7 o'clock. It's at the NMSU Atkinson Music Recital Hall. You can go to lascruceschamberballet.org. I'll also put the phone number there and you can purchase tickets. Um, you certainly want to see that. There uh, are limited seats, but we want to make sure that everybody gets the chance. And, you know, my hat's off to you all for, for continuing on this and making it accessible to people, to young people especially, because, Francisco, you know how it would have impacted you. Uh, and we know how the power of music and arts are so critical to people's overall development. And so I'm very excited. I would say break a leg, but I don't want you to. 
because uh, I want you all to be in top tip, you know, tip top shape. Uh, and I wish you all the best of luck. And it's so great to see you. And thank you so much. Oh, thank thank you, you for all you do. Thanks we appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great time. Bye. Thank Bye. you.